Hey you guys, this is Parallaxog, future officer of the guild Unbeknownst, and I welcome you to our intermediate Resto Shaman Guide. Despite all healers being very balanced at the moment, Resto Shaman are in a great place due to the high amount of utility that we can bring to a raid, and with the exception of Grievous Week, we do great in Mythic Pluses as well. So let's start with our talent builds. So, there are two main builds when it comes to Resto Shaman healing. With the first being a more chain heal centric build, utilizing the buff from High Tide. Now, at level 15, you're going to want to take Torrin. Torrin increases the initial heal from Riptide by 30%. People used to take Unleash Life to use right before the chain heal, but with the Tomb of Sargeras tier bonus, you want as many buffs to Torrin as possible and make that spell really strong. Now, level 30 is going to be fight dependent as well as preferential. Gust of Wind is a blink effect. It has a 15 second cooldown. It's simple, straight to the point. It's great for if you need to get to a location very quickly, or if you don't know a location that you're going to need to be beforehand, it gets you there very quickly. Graceful Spirits reduces the cooldown of Spirit Walker's Grace by 60 seconds, as well as increases the movement speed while it's active by 20%. And it also increases the speed of your Ghost Wolf form by an additional 10%. I like this talent a lot. This is the talent that I mostly run because it gives Spirit Walker's Grace approximately a 30% uptime. Because the buff from Spirit Walker's Grace lasts 23 seconds and makes the, the cooldown only one minute, it really makes it so that whenever you get, need to get to a location, Spirit Walker's Grace can be up. This is great for fights like Fallen Avatar, where if you get Unbound Chaos, you pop Spirit Walker's Grace. Because it lasts 23 seconds, it's still up for the next Ruptured Realities, and then most of the time it will be up for the next Unbound Chaos as well. So the uptime on Spirit Walker's Grace is absolutely insane if you take Graceful Spirit. It, you basically need a reason not to pop Spirit Walker's Grace whenever you're moving. The next talent is Windrush Totem. I very rarely take this in Tomb of Sargeras. It was very good for some fights in Nighthold, like Chromatic Anomaly, where you needed to get your entire raid to a place very quickly. However, in Tomb of Sargeras, I haven't seen very many uh, uses for this, other than hitting like five people for Ruptured Realities on, again, on Avatar. Windrush Totem is very limited use this uh, tier. I would stick to mainly Gust of Wind and Graceful Spirit. But again, it changes depending on what fight you're Level 45, you're almost always going to take Lightning Surge Totem. Voodoo Totem is, I've never used this, I can't ever find a proper time to use this in. Earth Grab Totem can be useful for, say, Botanist on the Lashers rooting them for a long amount of time. However, in most situations, Lightning Surge Totem is just superior to Earth Grab Totem. It's great for Trash, it's great for Mythic Pluses, it's great for Harjatan and, uh, and Mistress in Tomb. It's usually the pick. Level 60, you're usually going to be taking Ancestral Guidance. Ancestral Guidance is a great throughput cooldown. It even though it is an extra active that you have to use, you should get used to it because it is great on demand and it works really well with a legendary that I will get to later. Level 75 I would say is fight dependent. Earthen Shield Totem is great for if your raid or, or dungeon group is taking a large amount of damage in a specific time that you can predict, say Kill Jaden, the adds, the casting that they do, your entire raid's taking all of that and everybody's stacked up in one spot, you place this down and it basically halves the amount of damage that your raid takes and it's only a one minute cooldown so you can use it pretty much every add phase, it's, it's fantastic for mitigating damage. Ancestral Protection Totem is great for cheesing abilities, it resurrects one of your uh, allies if they die in the area. It was for Tychondrius Mythic, if, you ha if you're going to sack a player, this could get them up 
very quickly. If you can predict somebody's going to die in a given encounter, you can use this. And the downside is that it's a very long cooldown. It's a five minute cooldown. The upside is that it does not count as a battle res. So if you can predict somebody dying, I would say use Ancestral Protection Totem because it can. it's an extra battle res. It's very helpful. Level 90 is, for this build, it's always going to be Cloudburst Totem. Cloudburst Totem, again, works very well with a Legendary that I will get into later. It is, you can use it on cooldown, it provides a large amount of healing on demand. I'll get into tricks that you can use to, to increase the amount of damage that your Cloudburst Totem is taking by a large amount. And it is just great for throughput. Level 100, your choice here is going to be High Tide. What High Tide does is increases the amount of bounces your Chain Heal has by 1, and it also reduces the fall off of each bounce, the healing reduction by half. Although the other two talents in this level are pretty strong, you know, this build revolves around buffing your Chain Heal, and this is a very strong one. The reason why you're not taking Deluge at level 60 is because it's, in most situations it's too situational. However, High Tide is always great, especially in raids. And now for the second build. This build is going to change at level 100, where instead you're going to take Ascendance, and level 90, where you're going to take Echo of the Elements. Instead of Chain Heal, this build revolves around the use of Riptide and proccing your Tidal Waves with your Healing Surges and Healing Waves. For Burst AoE Healing, it uses both Ascendance and Ancestral Guidance as mini cooldowns. The build also takes Echo of the Elements to increase the amount of Riptides you can pump out. Now that we know our talents and playstyle, we can start to get into what kind of gear we're looking for and what our stat priorities are. First on the list is Mastery. What it does is increase the amount of healing that your spells do, the lower your targets are. This is especially good on progression or when you are short in healers, when lots of people are going to be low. A good number to aim for with Mastery is about 100%, which will be doubling your healing done to low targets. Next we're looking for Critical Strike. The reason why Crit Strike is so highly valued is because of our passive Resurgence. It reads, whenever our abilities critically strike, they refund a percentage of our maximum mana. So Crit Strike is doubly effective, as it both effectively reduces mana costs and buffs our spells. Next up is Versatility, which is simply a straight up damage and healing buff to our abilities. Lastly, we have Haste. The reason why Haste is so undesired is that while it does increase our instantaneous healing per second by allowing us to use our spells faster, it also causes us to run out of mana faster. And when we are able to effectively plan out the amount of mana that we are using throughout a fight, it does very little to help our overall healing output. Alright, next let's talk about legendaries. So there are a couple, like any other spec, there are a couple of main legendaries that you're going to want to be obtaining. Uh, the first is Fire in the Deep. Uh, it, it, it grants a very strong passive in Ascendance, but the downside of this legendary is that it's random. Usually when you're healing you don't want random effects because you can't really control when you want to use them because Sometimes there will be periods where you need very strong healing, and sometimes there will be periods when you don't need any healing at all, and random effects can't uh, really work well in those environments. However, Ascendance is such, such a strong uh, effect that in many cases it will be beneficial, and also the stats are good on this Legendary. Another great legendary that you're going to be using almost all of the time is Roots of Shalandrasil. Roots is, as I was saying before, it's the best in slot legendary. It's fantastic. The stats are very good. Um, it has a lot of haste on it, but having some haste is not a bad thing. You just want, don't want to be stacking haste. The equip effect is super strong with uh, Elemental Shaman. The reason why it works so well with the spec is because of Cloudburst Totem, as I was saying before, and also Ancestral Guidance. Both both of those effects use the healing from Roots of Shalandrasil, 
and use it to heal other people in your party or raid as well, which is very helpful effect. It just increases the throughput of both of those cooldowns by a large amount. The next best in slot is Velen's Future Sight. The, I would say the two best in slot legendaries for this spec in most situations are Velen's and Roots of Shalandrasil. Velen's is great for throughput. It's just another, and it's, it's pretty much another Ancestral Guidance. It duplicates all of your healing effects, which is very helpful. Uh, next, I would say, is Janna. Janna is a decent throughput legendary. It's not fantastic. It's certainly not a best in slot anymore. It used to be very good, and a lot of people used it, but it's f sort of fallen out of favor. The, the healing effect that you do get from it is significant, and I would certainly run it if you have it, and don't have the majority of the others. Another fantastic legendary is Pride As. Uh, I think Pride As certainly used to be undervalued, but I think now more people understand how useful it is, especially in progression and high level Mythic Pluses where you're not certain on your ability to stay alive. Pride As is fantastic. The shield that you get is 25 of your maximum health, which is which is a very high amount, and then the stats are incredible. Um, it gives you a ton of stats. And other than that, um, there aren't too many other good legendaries. Tide Callers, the hands are pretty decent. The uh, the finger is pretty decent. I'd say both of those are on par with uh, Jonnet. The others are not, they don't really have a place in any sort of high level content content that you would do, be doing. Certainly use them if you have them, but uh, that's about it. In terms of gear, the best trinket that you're going to be looking for, first of all, is Velen's, but because it's a legendary, if you're running some other legendaries, the best trinket that you want to be looking for is Barbaric Mind Slaver. This is fantastic because it procs off of your healing stream totems and your chain heal bounces and stuff like that. Second is going to be Deceiver's Grand Design. Uh, it grants a huge shield, especially in Mythic Pluses, it's fantastic. Uh, you can keep it on two of your five party members, which is 40% of your party members, which is a pretty, pretty large amount. If you are struggling with mana, Dark Moon Deck Promises is fantastic. It reduces the base mana cost of all of your spells by a significant amount up to its averages around 1.5k 2k um, it's very strong it costs a lot of gold to to make if you want to buy it off the auction house for my server it was about 25,000 which isn't insane but it's definitely worth it uh, very useful in fights on very long fights like uh, kill Jaden other than that, you're not really going, going to be using any old legendaries from other tiers. Sorry, other trinkets from other tiers. The trinkets from this tier are very good. For relics, you want to be using uh, relics that give you floodwaters or empowered droplets. This is for raid situations, as you're going to be using chain heal and healing rain a lot. For dungeons, uh, you're going to be looking for title chains and queen ascendant which are going to be decent uh, relics however I would not use a relics trait if you have a different relic that is a three item level increase on your weapon so if you have a relic that will give you a three item level increase I would um, use that relic over a relic that gives you a preferential trait Alright, so now that we know all the basics to playing Restu Shaman, we know the talents, we know the stat priorities, what gear we were looking for, we're now going to get into the gameplay tips. First up, you might have heard this a lot, but just make sure you know your ABC is always be casting. Uh, it's pretty basic, but regardless of what you're doing, you should be doing something. Uh, there shouldn't be a moment 
where you're not doing anything for more than like half a second because that's really going to lose both healing efficiency and if you're if you don't need to be healing you should be doing dps um if i'm standing right here and and we, i need to get over here for an objective you have plenty of global cooldowns or instant casts you have your healing stream totem you have your cloud burst totem and you have your riptide to be able to get over here that's about two globals i can i can use two of my three instant speed healing effects to basically get over there there you should not just be going to go ghost ruffle and running there unless you need to get there extremely quickly in which case i would recommend taking gust of wind for a fight like that um if you can't if you don't have these uh, cooldowns up, because this is a 6 second cooldown and both of these are 30 second cooldowns, if you have neither of those up, you should be using uh, Spirit Walker's Grace. Spirit Walker's Grace is a fantastic cooldown. It has a very low cooldown, especially if you take Raceful Spirit. It means that it's up for 30% of the fight if you're using it on cooldown. Um, there's no reason to be not using this if you need to move somewhere so even if you're moving when you're playing resto you have a lot of options you shouldn't just be ghost wolf go using ghost wolf form and just running there another tip that i have for increasing your healing per second is knowing the fights knowing when abilities are going to hit and how hard they're hitting for is a great way to both reduce the amount of damage that your raid is taking and also get up on the meters. Uh, using your earthen shield totem when your group is fairly stacked up and there's going to be a massive amount of raid wide damage going out is that's a ton of healing that you're doing just by reducing damage that people are taking. Uh, say for example on Maiden of Avatar the hammer that she does I, whenever she does that, I always check to see if this is up, and if it's up, I use it immediately. Just finding, just knowing when a group is taking damage is super helpful. Using Gift the Queen preemptively to increase your raid's uh, maximum health by 10% is super useful. And then the second hit, because of your gold trait, Deep Waters, after three seconds, it casts a second Gift of the Queen. So if you use a first gift of the queen to increase your group's maximum health, and then the second to actually heal for a significant amount, then that's going to just increase the survivability of your group by so much. Um, also, preemptively having your healing rain down, it, that saves two seconds of casting, just having it down right before an ability goes out. And then being ready to cleanse people is also another great way to uh, preemptively know mechanics, basically, and how to effectively deal with them. Another tip that I have is with Cloudburst Totem. What you can actually do with Cloudburst Totem is when you're in the middle of a healing spell, you can queue up Cloudburst Totem, and what will happen is your Cloudburst Totem will actually absorb the healing spell that you just finished casting so that's an, a way to get an extra spell cast into your cloudburst totem um, another thing that I see a lot of people doing ineffectively is just not using your cooldowns enough I make sure that I have this set up so that it flashes whenever a mini cooldown that I have flashes it signifies that that cooldown's up and ready to use. Your healing stream totem, you want to be using on cooldown. Whenever it comes up, you want to use it straight away. Your gift the queen, it's not exactly the same, but you want to be making sure that you are using it throughout a fight. If you have a six minute fight, you should be casting it at least like six times. I see a lot of people who only cast it like twice during a fight. And that's really just, that's not utilizing all of the tools that you have available to you. Same with Cloudburst Totem, you want to be using it pretty much whenever it's up, because it has such a short cooldown. 
and it also requires a lot of build up time to use. Make sure you're using your earthen shield totem a lot, and make sure that you're using your bigger cooldowns even. Uh, Spirit Link Totem, Healing Tide Totem, and Ancestral Guidance. Most people need to increase the amount of cast that they have on those spells, including me. I, I don't use those spells as often as I should. If you have a, plan, a fight planned out, say you know that you're going to need... I'm, I'm doing Heroic Avatar, right? I know that I'm going to need to save my Healing Tide Totem for the second phase of that fight. That means that I have the a large window in the first half of that fight to use Healing Tide Totem, and then it will be up again for the second half of the fight. So I should be finding these extra windows where I, ha where I can use my major healing cooldown just for like utility, just for keeping everybody up, and then knowing that it will be up later in the fight when I actually need to use it. Um, so for most fights you should try to aim for casting your cooldowns twice per fight and then for longer fights like Hero KJ maybe three times even. Uh, the last thing that I have is on mana conservation. You want to make sure that you're not spamming your chain heal super often because it is super expensive on mana. It costs 55,000 mana which is your most expensive ability. Even healing rain doesn't even cost 50,000, and then your other spells are Gift of the Queen doesn't have one, Riptide is 17,000, Healing Wave is 19,000. These are all very efficient spells, and you want to be casting these primarily. Your he Chain Heal you can cast fairly often, especially if you, you're trying to get Tidal Wave procs. Um, however, you don't want to be spamming your Chain Heal. Uh, that's the easiest way to run out of mana. Uh, if you are having mana problems or the fight is extremely long, what I do is I run the Dark Moon Deck of Promises. This trinket is very good because it reduces the base mana cost on all of your abilities and it decreases your mana consumption by a. This is a guess, but in my experience, it's been around 25%, um, maybe 30% you have a lot more mana during the fight and you'll just be using a lot more of your spells. Lastly, my UI and add-on setup. For my unit frames I use grid. This is a very stock version of grid. On its positioning, you want to make sure that it's close to your character model, either to the side or below it. This way you can see the environment around you as well as what you're standing in and the players around you. Next, I use click for my keybinds. Uh, it's very easy setup. Um, all you have to do is mouse over an ability and then click on your keybinding when you're in this mode. I also have a tell me when profile set up. Uh, this allows me to, again, just keep my eyes on the center of the screen, not having to look down at my action bars. I can see all my available spells, how much mana I have here, and I also use a timer here to show how long into the fight it is so I can I can properly time my cooldowns. If you guys want this profile, just feel free to ask. I also use an add-on called Exorcist Raid Tools. What it does is display a bunch of useful information, mostly for raids. One part of the add-on that I like a lot is the cooldown tracker. I think this is very important to healing. What it does is show the current available healing cooldowns that your raid has, and also the active ones and the ones that are on cooldown. It's very useful for making sure that you're not unnecessarily overlapping your healing cooldowns, and it also allows you to plan fights as well as give the other healers instructions on how to time their cooldowns. There's also a B-Res tracker that I use, which just has the amount of B-Reses that you have available to you, as well as a timer. That's uh, pretty much it. Alright, so that concludes the guide. If there are any takeaways, I would say if you're having problems healing, just try to figure out what you're doing wrong and make a plan on how to fix it. If you don't know what you're doing wrong, you can look at logs, you can even ask me in the Discord, 
we have a Parallax Entertainment Discord. Link will be in the description below. It's a great place to connect with all the content creators on this channel. Make sure you like and subscribe. And uh, have a great day. See you guys.